Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we explore, we learn about, and we taste the wonderful world of wine. If you're not familiar with the RT1 Exchange, it is a wine investment and trading platform as well as a wine club. Make sure to check out the link in the video description to learn more. This is part three of our essential guide to understanding Portuguese port wines. In part number one, we talked about how and where ports are made. If you haven't watched that video, you can catch up on it right here and you should, or you can also watch part two where we looked at the different fruity styles of ports the rubies, the vintage, and the LBV, the very fruity styles we looked at in part two. And today I want to complete our overview of all port wine styles by talking about what are possibly the most famous ports, the Tony ports, the aged, the oxidized styles, the reserve Tony as well, the 10, 20, 30, or 40 years old Tonys, We'll talk about what are the Colata ports as well. We'll find out what all of these are all about and what they taste like. To be absolutely complete in our guide to port wines, we'll also have a word about the grapes of port. Which grapes ports are made of, made from? Let's go. And let's start with the least interesting category, I'm afraid, but make sure to stick around because it will get interesting. You may find on the market ports labeled simply as Tony, or even sometimes hardly labeled as anything other than port from Portugal, but without any indication of age, no vintage, not the word Colata, nothing. Those are generic Tony ports, generally that are bulk produced and made in these oxidative styles, so allowing the wine to get oxidized by oxygen to get in contact with the air in tanks or vats. That's what Tony essentially means. But those ports aren't very old at all, not any older than any cheap ruby, although a ruby is a fruity style, Tony is that oxidized spicy style, but those generic Tonys are made from low quality grapes as well in large quantities and they're not complex wines, although to be fair they can be enjoyable, served chilled like you would if you have a martini for example. And France is in fact the biggest port drinking country in the world, fun fact, but the French only drink this cheap generic stuff. They don't, they're not interested in the better stuff from Portugal, they know nothing about it. Another French paradox, I suppose. If you see the mention Reserve Tony though, then you have something a little more special that is aged for at least seven years. It's not going to be all that deep and complex a Tony, but at least it's made with a little more attention to details and a bit better grapes as well. Reserve Tonys are decent, seven years old. But if you buy a Tony port with the age stated on the label, then is when you will really start enjoying yourself and start appreciating how Tony ports can be, how good, how exceptional they can become. You can find 10 year olds, 20 year olds, 30 year olds, and 40 year olds, and they'll be increasingly expensive as they get older, of course. So a 10 year old Tony will still be quite fruity and taste really like fresh grape juice, still with a little bit of spices and a bit of caramel from the oxidation but not a whole lot of it. They'll still look quite red with just subtle brown hues to a 10 year old. The 20 year olds, 20 year olds will have way more spices and start getting quite complex still with some grapefruit freshness, but it starts evolving quite a bit after 20 years old. 30 year olds become really, really deep and complex. You start getting way more flavors of coffee and chocolate that come in. The fresh grape juice notes have become more raisin-like, like sultana juice, more. Uh, those will look quite brown by now at 30 years old. Now the 40 years olds will be really dark in color and taste rather somewhat old with an extreme length to the palate, extreme concentration, very syrupy, they start becoming quite savory as well, lots of walnut, lots of mushroom, loads of spices as well. 40-year-old Tonys are rather rare and expensive, hard to find, 
but for sure they are one of the joys, one of the extraordinary wonders port wines can offer. Not everybody might prefer an older port, though a 40 year old might be a little too old for some palates, you might simply prefer the 10 year old style because it tastes fresher and fruitier, while some may like a 20 year old better because it's still fresh but a little deeper and spicier, while some might find their sweet spot right at 30 years old because they really start to get complex, but 40 year olds might be a little too old for them. One of the joys of Tony as well is finding out which is your favorite style, which may vary from producer to producer as well. Finally, what is called the collator port, the word collator is generally printed on the label. Collata means harvest in Portuguese. Those are more Tony style ports made from a single year. So not to be confused with vintage ports that are not made in an oxidative style. You can watch my video talking about vintage ports and what they are if you want to learn more about those. Collata are oxidized ports but from one single vintage rather than being blended like the Tonys are. The Collata can be fascinating to get a sense of the vintage but with all the nutty or the spicy, the caramelly goodness of a Tony to them but from a single vintage. Fascinating stuff. And to finish and to make sure you know everything that you should know about port wines after watching this three-part series dedicated entirely to port wines, let's have a word about the grapes that make port wines. Virtually pretty much all port wines are blended from different grapes and pretty much all red grapes. Only some rare single vineyard ports, very specialty ports, made from a single quinta, a single vineyard, might be made from one single grape, but it's going to be the exception. There are some white ports as well that are made from uh, white grapes, of course, but they're not very common. But everything else is blended from red grapes. There are 29 grape varieties that are recommended to make port in the Douro, and over 80 that are allowed. So. 30 different grapes that are actually used. Traditionally, all of those different grapes were planted all together, mixed up randomly in the vineyard. One plant of this there, one plant of this there, one plant of this there, all mixed up in what we call now a field blend, meaning all grapes are blended, but in the field, in the vineyard already grown together in the field, not blended at the winery after you picked different grapes and made different batches at the winery. Does that make sense? So with modern viticulture, nursery now supply batches of single variety grape vines to growers, of course, and wineries can choose to plant or supply one grape over the other because it may have a certain characteristic they need in the blend. More tannins, more body, more sweetness, more acidity, so now vineyards are generally planted with one single variety and then they mix up then blend differently at the winery. But the most common grapes used in the Douro are the Tinta Roris, uh, which is the same as the Spanish Tempranillo. You've got of course Turiga Nacional, which is considered the finest grape in the Douro. Turiga Franca, which is pretty much as good as Turiga Nacional, perhaps a little finer, but it has to be grown in really hot sites. Tinta Cao adds dense tannins to the blends, while the Tinta Barroca has a really thin skin, so it gives very sweet wines, very fruity but low in tannins. That's your main types of the most used grapes in the Douro. Obviously, winemakers use these different components and flavor profiles when crafting and crafting, defining the profile of their blends to balance out the different characteristics of each grape to form a greater, more harmonious whole based on their specific house style as well. And that's the grapes of port wine in short. On this, we've now completed our complete guide to understanding port wines. If you haven't watched part one and part two of our port series, make sure to catch up on them here. And I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Make sure to watch those. We'll have more series on more fine wines from around the world with the RT One Exchange. Cheers.